Hello everyone, Don the Crown here, and today I want to give you a little bit of a day one update for Vessel of Hatred. So despite a five hour delay due to technical difficulties, everything kind of went to plan and just been really awesome and a lot of fun. There is a little bit of lag from time to time, but for the most part the game has been pretty smooth and very fun to play. Now if you've been following along with my fastest spirit born leveling build zooms through the campaign and Diablo 4 guide, this build actually got a couple of buffs and it was even faster than I was expecting it to be. Uh, absolutely just tearing through the campaign and my chat was like kind of keeping me updated with like how far along other content creators were. And when I hit 60, the closest highest guy that we were kind of keeping an eye on was like level 50 ish. And so just really zooming super duper fast and to kind of give you a quick idea of like what that build looks like. You're pretty much taking a huge advantage of the Eagle Spirit Hall here. And the thing that really matters is that every time you evade, you're going to fling eight feathers that do 125% weapon damage. And this scales with things like Spirit Feather, uh, Potency Temper. It scales with Primary Eagle Spirit Hall Temper on weapon. And so it just kind of gets really ridiculous. And uh, this is shooting 1,000 weapon damage just baseline. So this is really outperforming stuff like Quill Volley at low level, just because you don't even need any particular aspect. And then they kind of buffed it here because on the tree, they changed acceleration to make it so that you get one additional evade charge. And so with this, you can pick up three additional free evade charges, like, regardless of what's on your boots. And so every third time you evade is also every third time we're going to cast Thunder Spike from evading, which means that we reduce our evade cooldown by five seconds. So every three evades gets one free, and it's just incredible, insane damage. Uh, when I got to tier or torment one here, I went like right into Uber Lilith and uh, messed around with a little bit and absolutely just tore it up. The uh, boss really didn't stand too much of a chance. Uh, my armor was incredibly low in this fight. And so she could like actually one shot me with her like drain move. It does a lot of damage and I had like 400 armor. But as you can see, the damage is kind of ridiculous. Uh, if you're following along with the guide, the one thing I would highly recommend that you go and pick up is the ex ex acceleration aspect. It is the thing that makes it so that when you hit a uh, vulnerable enemy, you have a chance to reset your evasion cooldown. And this is just incredibly, incredibly strong because this procs seemingly with the uh, <laughs> Eagle, with the Eagle primary hall pretty darn frequently, especially if you get stacks of ferocity. And since we're gonna do Jaguar minor, you get a lot of ferocity and this is just procking off a lot. And then you can get stuff like slapping Edge Master's aspect either on your amulet or on a two-hander weapon. And you're just kind of tumbling all over the place. It's absolutely crazy. And uh, like I said, if you put Spirit Feather Potency on you know any pretty much offensive piece of gear, it's actually a multiplier for this number here. So it's just really, really crazy. So I was playing this build going into Torment 2, and then I dropped practically a perfect midnight sun and then i got myself a really good harmony of ebawaka and then i got a really good rod of kepeleke all within about like 30 minutes and so i felt kind of like i needed to re-roll into quill volley at this point and it's been pretty fun and one thing to note is i kind of felt a little bit weaker than my evade build right off the bat mostly because my paragon i did not have sapping right away which pretty much is like kind of mandatory for this build to kind of feel good because it generates a lot of resources for you and gives you a lot of damage and so like, i think i probably would have been happier if i just stayed with the evade build but you know it's kind of is where it is here now and i think that right now we're about at the point where i can just go push up into torment 4 but after about like 17 hours of actually streaming and playing the game and being in cosplay if you haven't seen my cosplay, we like I dressed up as a spirit board, kind of a lion eagle with a, a broom here as a, a quarterstaff. I put a clip of that in my shorts. And uh, 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but I was also very tired. So I went and took a nap and now I'm here recording this video for you guys. Let's kind of show you a little bit of what the power looks like right now. And we are using unyielding aspect here. This did get nerfed exactly like we said it was going to be. It now has a maximum of 1500 bonus weapon damage. So we can't have like infinite scaling from this anymore. And if we're going to have this on a glove, like we still can get quite a bit more armor here. We do have disobedience aspect to help boost the armor a little bit. We can go and get more uh, good gems here. And overall, our resists are kind of in a bad spot. Hopefully we can find a Tyrael's Might sometime soon. This is a Torment 3. I'm going to summon up a Grigor here real quick. Also, by the way, if you don't know, you can just stand right here. And this is a completely safe zone where you're not going to take any damage at all from Grigor. And just wait. And uh, yeah, here's the damage. As you can see, you know, he pretty much just dies relatively quickly. And uh, we stayed pretty much counterattacked the entire time. So it's pretty hard for him to hit us and do any damage. And that would have been really cool if we had dropped a T-Reels Might just now. But, you know, <laughs> never lucky, I guess. And uh, yeah, so Midnight Sun here, this is the guy that drops the ring. This is pretty mandatory for the build as well. Because this makes it so that you are basically going to get a lot of the resources you just spent uh, every single time your Kepeleke fills up. I do kind of want to talk a little bit about this build real quick because there were a lot of questions that I was getting in my chat. People were a little bit confused about how this works. So Rada Kepeleke basically makes your core skills into basic skills. They're free to cast. Uh, they have reduced damage though, depending on their cast. But realistically, we want to try to fill up our Vigor as much as possible. Because whenever the skill is cast at maximum Vigor, your core skills consume it all. It gives you extra projectiles for Quill Volley, and then it becomes guaranteed crit, and you get a huge multiplicative damage per point of Vigor that was consumed. So I have 2.8 uh, roll on here, and I have a 200 Vigor pool. So that's a lot of damage. That is a lot, a lot of damage. That's like <laughs> uh, 2.8 times 200. I can't do math right now. That's a lot of damage. And so we don't really do very much damage when we aren't full of vigor. So we need to find a lot of ways to fill it back up. So one of the ways we're doing is Midnight Sun here. So when we critically strike, we're gonna regain 50% of that vigor we just spent. And so we just get that back right away, which is really great. On ring here, I'm putting vigorous and hopefully eventually gonna get this up to like plus six with like perfect triple tap. And this is not necessarily a perfect ring for me or anything like that. This is a pretty good version of a ring. I'll probably change vulnerable damage, maybe to critical strike damage. But for the most part, this is fine. Uh, Midnight Sun's giving us quite a bit back. And we're also going to be putting uh, Vigorous probably on this amulet. This amulet is not very great, but it's working for now. Uh, I could also do resource generation. And then another thing I've been kind of messing around with, that it might be bugged. This might be a bugged interaction, but Pock Lum here seems kind of strange because when I spend 5% of my maximum resource, I'm supposed to restore one primary resource uh, per 5%. So it should give me 20 primary resource back. However, as you see here, as I use my resource, uh, I only have three. And if I, you know, cast a whole bunch back over here again, I'll just cast up until I'm full. And if I cast, I have three vigor back. So it's not seemingly working the way that we would expect. And we are potentially getting this extra 20 vigor during the pop of the Kapaleke. So giving us even more multiplicative damage during an explosion, which is uh, pretty good. I did have some people in the chat basically say that when they switched to this rune combination, that they started to do more damage. That's kind of like what turned me on to looking at this. Now, the other thing I'm using right now is Yule K, which is basically cast a skill with a cooldown, and we eventually get Druid's Earth and Bulwark. And this just pops off a lot and gives us a lot of barrier. Gives us a lot of protection. Earthen Bulwark is really nice because not only gives us defense, but getting barrier here gives us additional damage for Viscous Shield. And we can pretty much just spam counterattack. We can spam Hunter because 
we are using the Prodigy's Tempo here. So every third consecutive cast of the same core or potency skill reduces all skills active cooldowns by 10%. And so if I just pop my cooldowns here, I can use Intricacy to pop it out again. And so you can see here now I have my barrier that's pretty big. And then uh, Prodigy's Tempo will just lower the cooldowns of all that stuff pretty rapidly. And then on top of that, using these defensive cooldowns gives me back more vigor. Get 10 vigor per defensive cooldown. And I'm pretty sure right now that I'm missing a, a skill point from uh, <laughs> from going to Nahantu. So I'm probably going to put the last point in there as well. But overall, the build feels really solid. It feels really great. We do need a Tyrael's Might. We just do need better gear overall. Uh, we got a GA Rod of Kapaleke, but it was like the worst roll possible. It was like 1% on the unique aspect. And it was like a GA on velocity, which isn't even really all that great for us. Because although this does generate uh, vigor for us, we have to move. Uh, so if you've dealt damage within the last five seconds and are moving, you generate seven vigor per second. Uh, and we don't really want to move while we're attacking. This is like kind of a bad combination. I'm not really a big fan of this. I wish this instead was like balanced exertion or maybe even vigorous would be insane if they had changed that to this. But velocity is kind of a dead stat here. But I'm having a lot of fun. It's been really, really great. Uh, I've been leveling up my mercenaries, so I got them up to rank 10 here. I might switch over to get all of them up to rank 10. If you watch my mercenary video, I kind of know that it's important to level these guys up because as they level up with the rapport, the shop that is in the Merc Den gets more options in it, and some of these options are pretty good. And so uh, like you go over to Hurt, and you can restock for free occasionally, and it'll have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Now, one of the first people I went and I leveled up here is the Aldkin kid. And the reason I did that is because his first bartering thing here, it gives you an option of a cache of resource aspects. And the resource aspect I have here, adaptability, I just couldn't find it all anywhere. And I actually found them from the vendor here. And so this is a pretty good deal to do. And so when you refresh this, you can get stuff like utility, resource cache, there's master working caches. I'm not sure what the salvage cache is here, but sure, we'll pick that up as well. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that what we got. I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, just a little bit of loot. That's probably not worth it. The master working cache, a little bit of obols and stuff. That might not even be worth it either. But the resource aspects and the other aspects that you can get, I definitely think that, especially early on, this is a really good way to get some of these things. And so uh, highly recommend picking these up. Highly recommend leveling up Aldkin at least. And then each mercenary has two different breakpoints. And so all the way down here at tier eight, you'll also give me a cache that has scattered prisms, gen fragments and ruins or runes. And uh, yeah, that's definitely something I want to get long-term. And I'll just go around eventually and level up all my mercenaries so that I can get all the breakpoint things. Subo here gives me boss summoning materials, which, you know, is pretty nice as well. Uh, Variana, we've already leveled up. And she gives us an additional thing of master working materials, which you just saw. Our boy uh, Raher here gives us a thing with valuable crafting materials, which maybe isn't all that great. But Raher, I think, is a pretty good reinforcement for his Bastion. But yeah, that's pretty much the update of what's going on. Uh, check out the videos for the leveling stuff or for the Iron Eagle build for this. Uh, pretty much the build guide that I'm following right now is the one that you'll find right here on the channel. And it is right here. Endgame Spiritborn Eagle Build Guide. And uh, it's just been rocking and rolling. Hope this video helps you out. We'll see you again soon. And thanks for coming by.